Hey, G U Gun people. Let's talk about. Uh, <laughs> I had to repronounce that. <laughs> gun people, not dumb people. Sometimes it's dumb people. All right. So let's talk about um, this case that everybody is saying is a um, a, a new law that some judges rule that black people can run, Africans can run from the police because of standard. Uh, this is kind of a legal concept that's been around for a while. It's nothing new. There wasn't a new law. They, they basically, um, he, he suppressed some evidence. And when you go to a suppression hearing as a cop, and, and in one of my crazy videos, I think I talk about the judge that suppressed some dope I'd found, which was total BS. And if we would have took it to appeal, we knew we could have won, but it was, you know, it was a scale and, I don't know, a couple ounces of crank, and it wasn't that big of a deal. He had a, he had a, a, a cut, looked like he had cut a stereo that he stole. I saw it on a traffic stop, and the cops suppressed it because I said that I wasn't going to write him a ticket anyway. He was in violation. I stopped him. He was in a high crime area. Uh, he ended up being on probation, so I, I asked him some questions, looked in the car, saw the cut wires, and ended up doing a probation search because he was on probation. He was searchable. I didn't need probable cause to search him, and I found dope. And the judge went, well, since you said that you weren't going to write him anyway, I'm going to go ahead and suppress it. Now, why the judge suppressed it? I don't know. He a liberal left. It was in Sacramento. He's a liberal left judge. Maybe he knew the defense attorney. Maybe the defense attorney gave him some song and dance. Sometimes in the back room, the judges will, you know, they turn and go, look, Your Honor, you know me. And if my guy was guilty, I'd be like, you know what, we got to do, I'll defend him the best I can, but I can only do so much. But I'm telling you, this guy's a good guy. He's got a kid. He's got a wife. He's about to get a job. You know, this guy really needs a break. And, and you know, so I don't know what happened. I don't really give a shit. The shit got suppressed. I found it. I did my job. I did it right. The DA, they gave it because it was such an easy case. They gave it to a newer young DA so he could get experience. And he went in there and kind of blew it, didn't, didn't cite cases, didn't ask me the right question, didn't fight it enough. And the judge sided with the defense because our legal system is not based on truth. It's not ba People say it's on justice or it's by the law. It's a, it's a court of law, not a court of justice. That's all bullshit double talk. Okay, our system should be more concerned with the truth than playing the legal games. But that's not the case. Truth has no... We can have witness confessions from people and the judge can say, the jury's not hearing that because I didn't like the way you get it. I'm holding you accountable. And again, there's this check and balance with the government holding government power accountable. How do you do it? How do you penalize cops that break the law... You can't fire them, you can't put them in jail, it's the law, but it's not a law like if you commit robbery, you can do two, three, four years in prison. There's no laws that, like as a cop, if you violate someone's rights, I, I'm not, well, rights isn't the right way. If you go about getting evidence not in the rules of evidence the way it should be, there's no real penalty for doing it. So, the, so the, the government and the judges have a right to say, you know what, since you got this the wrong way, we're not going to allow it. Because we don't want to encourage you cops to do the wrong thing, so we're not going to let it in. Well, the flip side of this is this judge has suppressed my evidence. And I, I, I think that's the only time I got evidence suppressed. I don't know. You know, it wasn't a lot. I think that's the only time that I can remember. But maybe there was another time. Anyway, so... The, the, the thing is, it's all on the luck of the draw. What did the judge do? I mean, you always say when you go to court, if you got a weak case, you better hope the judge got laid last night or, you know, whatever. Because if, if they didn't, and they're in a bad mood, and they had a fight in the morning, or they're fighting with a neighbor, or they've had, some, they had a flat on the way to work, your case will have a direct outcome on that judge's attitude for the day. Now, I know people like to tell you that judges are great, and they wear a black robe, and they're lawyers, and they're... They're super smart because they're up on a bench. They're up on a bench because of their color, because of their sex, because they went to school with the governor who appointed them, because they're politically... That's why they're on the bench. Stop with the lies that people that wear robes are somehow should be worshipped and good, because it just ain't so. So, anyway, back to this judge 
who ruled that black people, that people are running. There's all kind of articles. I'm going to put a link so you can read it. But there's all kind of articles saying judge rules that black people can run from cops. All right. That, that's, that's an uneducated comment. It's, it's not right. It's not in the totality of the case. The, the laws and, and when you're dealing with legal systems, it goes to the totality of circumstances. You have to take everything as a whole and you can't just look at one part. And, and that's what this judge did. He totally blew this. The judge is wrong. It's a bad case law and it causes more cops to go out there and go, you know what? I don't give it. So the next time a cop comes to your house and he's like, I don't give a shit. Your house is burglarized. Here you go. We ain't taking prints. Fill this out. Give us a thing. We'll give you a police report. Follow with your insurance. Have a nice day. And they don't give a shit. Case law like this is why. And cops deal with this all the time. I'm not defending cops. I'm not saying all cops are great. I'm not saying we should have unlimited power. I'm not saying all that. I'm just saying it's very frustrating when you get good cops doing good police work and catching real bad guys to have it thrown out and dismissed by some judge who wants to push his liberal left agenda and claim African privilege or the poor Africans not his fault. So here's the case in a nutshell. Two Africans break into a, I think another African, I didn't really say, but from reading the report, it sounded like it was in that type of neighborhood to where it was probably predominantly black. But I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm just guessing. I'm not being racist. <laughs> oh, you're, just because the criminals are black, the you know, liberals have a fit now because they, only they can talk about color when it's against white people. But if a white person mentions color, she's racist. So... Uh, there's a squirrel over there eating. I threw out some nuts, so I'm kind of looking over there. Anyway, so it, it, the totality of circumstances, this guy, white, black, Asian, whatever, alien, uh, you know, extraterrestrial from Mars, whoever, he comes in his house and two black guys, two Africans, are in there with hoodies on. Rick, you're, you're stereotyping thugs. Not all black people wear hoodies. That's not... Look. If you look at all the riots of the Africans, they're all got 90% of them got hoodies on. Why? Because hoodie conceals your face. It's a common attire for people committing crimes to wear hoodies. Why? It con it conceals their hairstyle, how long their hair is. It conceals any tattoos on their face or neck. It conceals things about their identity, kind of like the hoblob or whatever the kosher rat, whatever. When you start concealing your face. And you claim it's for some, you know, it's my African heritage that I wear a hoodie. Whatever. That's a problem. So these two guys are robbing. They're committing a crime. They're committing a felony. They're breaking into someone's house that is occupied, which makes it a higher felony. And they steal shit. And the, the victim comes out and sees them climbing out the window with their shit. So they call the cops. The cops come to the burglary like they should. The guy goes, I saw him. They had, one had a red hoodie, one had a black hoodie. The other one was dark and, and dark clothing. The fact that there's three of them committing a robbery tells me that the likelihood of violence is greater. These are bad dudes. They're planning and organizing. This wasn't just a spur of the moment. Hey, that door's open. Let me open the door, see something I can grab and leave. It's a higher level of sophisticated crime. These guys are bad dudes if they're working in three at a time. That's they got numbers. That means they can overpower the homeowner. That means they can commit rape. They can commit sexual assault. They can do things that one person couldn't do. Again, as a cop, I see all this as an escalating offense, which is much more critical to be caught. So, I'm, uh, I'm me as a cop, I'm going to work harder to catch this guy than I'm going to work on a... African, because they probably call me racist, a black man who's 70 years old and the grocery store wants me to arrest him because he's hungry and homeless and he took a freaking, uh, you know, peach pie and he walked out the store and ate it. I'm not going to work that case that much. I know everybody's belief, you know, all white people be like, all right, another black man. I get to go arrest him. Yeah! That's not the way it is, okay? I mean, cops just don't think in color. We think in paper and work and seriousness and how can this bite me in the ass? I mean, there's all kind of things we think about. What we don't think about is color. We don't give a shit. So anyway, you can't convince somebody who wants to believe that because then they lose their victim status. So this is a higher level of crime. So the cop, being good police work, he does what's called a neighborhood canvas. He's going to drive the area and start searching 
for three black dudes wearing a red hoodie, black hoodie, dark and dark clothing and see if they're carrying maybe fruits of the crime, stolen shit that they took, a TV, I, I forgot something, it says on the thing what they took. And then if he catches them with that, then he can arrest them and he solves a crime and he gets bad guys off the road. Gee, that's a concept. Maybe cops should be more worried about protecting good people than protecting color of bad people. Oh, Rick, you're just a racist. All right, whatever. So this cop, and I don't know if the cop is white, black, Hispanic, or whatever, he's out there doing his job, and he sees Tyrone Jefferson and, uh, you know, Willie Jones walking on the street, and he notices he has a red hoodie and a black hoodie. Now, again, totality of the circumstances. I think they were either a half mile or a mile away. So from the time the call was reported to 30 minutes later or 25 minutes when he found them, which is a reasonable amount of time for somebody to walk that distance, probably they're going to get less distance because they're probably going to be hiding and dodging. But anyway, they're walking. The cop sees them. Very reasonable for a cop to say, hey, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, okay, time of night. It's darkness. There's not a lot of people on the street. As a matter of fact, the officer said there was nobody else on the street. Nobody on the street. Three o'clock in the morning, a burglary just occurred. Two black men, one wearing a red hoodie and black hoodie, and the cop sees them and says, hey, we call that a clue. I think these guys might be involved. I'm going to contact them. Cop tries to stop them to do an encounter, to ID them, and to conduct an investigation. Totally reasonable totally justified the guys run they take off flight can be considered consciousness of guilt if it's connected with a crime or in a vicinity of crime or the recency of a newly committed crime so when you're evaluating somebody flight now if a guy's jogging down the street in jogging clothes at 12 in the afternoon I can't run up and this is what people think white cops do as a white cop, I can't go and go, there's a black man running. Let me go stop him. He probably committed a crime. That's what the media and people want you to think, and that's not justified. Cops don't do that because we know it's freaking stupid, and we don't look at color, and we don't want more freaking work on somebody that didn't commit a crime. We got plenty of crime to go get that are committed. Why do we want to harass people that aren't committing crimes? Well, because Rick the liberals say that you guys are all racist, and that's what you do. Okay, well, then shit, I guess it's true. Damn. All right. So, you can't stop a guy for flight alone. You can't stop a guy for running. The courts have ruled this. It's been standing law for years. Flight by itself is not probable cause or reasonable suspicion or articulable suspicion to stop someone, detain them, and conduct an investigation. I got it. Now you add high crime area, recency of crime, matching the description of a suspect, uh, you add things like that, and now you get totality of circumstances that says, hey, this sounds reasonable, and a reasonable, educated freaking cop with two brain cells can probably rub them together and go, I think that's a clue. These guys might be involved. I should probably, since I'm getting paid to be out here, and if I was at the donut shop, people would be bitching and complaining. So since I'm getting paid to maybe catch people, let me investigate and stop these guys. They run. I chase them. I catch them. One of them throws a gun on the ground, and it turns out that they have long criminal histories. They've been arrested over 30 times. They've got burglary charges and assault charges and sexual charges. We call those career criminals. They've been in the system. They know the rules. They've had a public liberal defense attorney that has educated them every time they went to court on the mistakes they made in their previous crimes. So when they do future crimes, they're better educated to set the cops up, to destroy evidence, to conceal their crimes, to not make incriminating statements, to come up with great excuses so you don't get charged. So they have this government paid for liberal education of criminal uh, avoidance and now this guy says, you know what? I was running because I'm a black man and I'm scared. So his attorney goes, damn, that's a good idea. Let me throw that shit on the wall because that's what attorneys do. Just throw a bunch of shit on the wall and the shit that sticks, it's like, cool, it worked. 
So the attorney in his great wisdom says, you know what? I think it's reasonable for a black person to run because we've just had case law to where the Boston, wherever this happened, Massachusetts police were freaking stopping and frisking people and the percentage of black people stopped were higher. All right, people, we call this a clue. If you're in a predominantly black neighborhood, the number of black people stopped are going to be higher. I know it's a shock. I know the liberals are like, the freaking heads are exploding right now because they're like, how can that be? That's got to be racist. Okay, if you go to Mexico and ask the cops, the stats are going to prove without a doubt more Mexicans are stopped than white people. Those racist Mexican cops, they're all juke boot, leg jack boot pieces of shit. Okay, it, it, I'm sorry. It, it, that's just the way it is. I know it's hard to grasp for a liberal because they're freaking just can't handle the truth, but that's what happens. So because they're in a black area, black people are stopped, crimes committed by black people, black people are arrested more, they're stopped more, and they're contacted more. Gee. Okay, if, if I have 10 crimes in my area and every suspect is described as a black male, does it make sense to any reasonable person that I should be looking for white people? Well, oh, Rick, that, that's just racist because you're an idiot. All right, I can't freaking help idiots and I can't help liberals because they just don't want to see the light for what it is. They're too brainwashed on George Bush. Well, Hillary Clinton's great. We gotta have a woman. We gotta have a sexual bisexual. We gotta put a gay guy in charge in the military. We gotta, we gotta do all this bullshit and argue about bathrooms instead of just using common sense saying, damn, that sounds pretty reasonable. Maybe there isn't some hidden agenda be behind a cop stopping two black males that just reported a crime less than a mile away and they match the description of the hoodie. So, what did the judge do with this evidence? The judge of the lower court said, you know what, perfectly reasonable, I got no problem. The defense goes, I want, I want the gun suppressed because my client was unlawfully stopped just because he ran and the description wasn't good enough and he was picked because he was a black man and you know, I want the gun thrown out. And the judge looked at his rap sheet, he looked at the cop, he looked at the calls, he looked at the time, the location, the description, no one else on the street. And the judge went, now, I don't believe that shit. The cops are right. The gun stays in. What did the defense attorney do? Damn, there is a black quota mandatory hire judge on the appeals court. I think if I can get this to him because he's black and down for the man and the Africans, that he will probably side with me and my poor black client. And he escalated it up for an appeal. And what did this judge do? Yo, brother, what's up, P? I got your back, brother. Hell no. Throw that shit out. Honky ass cop got that gun for no reason. And he threw it out. And in his justification, he said, because blacks are, un are, are more stopped, because blacks have a reason to fear police, because the liberal left told us, because I want to help my brother Africans commit more crimes and not be held accountable, I'm going to say... Those cops were bad, and I'm throwing the gun out. Well, when he throws a gun out, he overturns the lower court, so now the lower court has a precedent case that says, hey, this judge said that cops can run. So now more people are going to say black people can run from the cops because the judge said so. And now people in the liberal left is reporting in the papers and on the headlines, Appeals court overturns cops and says black people have a right to run from the police. That's not what happened. That's not reasonable. When you read that, it shouldn't. you should question kind of like, man, this just doesn't sound right. It doesn't pass a smell test. If something stinks, if you're in a room in an elevator and it smells like a fart and you ask everybody, anybody fart and everybody says no, it's reasonable to think that one person's lying because I know what a freaking smart uh, fart smells like. So anyway, that's the case. Hopefully, I know my viewers will get it, but the drive-bys that come here and just want to complain and whine and the liberals that want to come here, why do you hate liberals? We're not all that stupid. If you're freaking liberal, you're stupid. I can't help it. All right, we'll end that there.